Welcome to the Pianist TV channel. In this following masterclass, Graham Fitch discusses the technique of quick runs and passage work. The filming takes place at Steinway Hall, right in the heart of London. Before Graham begins his lesson, here's a glance around Steinway's impressive showroom and Hall of Fame as well as the all-important workshop. On this introduction, Graham plays the Gigue from Bach's French Suite No. 5 on a Model D Concert Grand, the same instrument on which he gives his lesson. Hello, I'm Graham Fitch bringing you this video demonstration on runs and passage work from Steinway Hall in London. Now this co complements my article in issue 72 of Pianist magazine. And what I hope to do, as always, is to give you very practical steps that you can take at home in your practicing to help you overcome technical issues. Now, as I say today, we're talking about runs otherwise known as passage work. But I think it's very unhelpful to lump these all together. So, you know, if we think about what types of runs or what types of passage work we might find, we could get very light runs, very light, gossamer-like uh, passages, which need almost a staccato in the finger, fingertip, and a rather a higher wrist. That's a leggero. Um, I talked about leggero touch in a previous demonstration. Other runs, such as we might find in Mozart, are really, if we think of them as melodic lines played fast, we wouldn't be far off the mark. What we don't want is to hear machine gun fire. Uh, we want to hear a melodic line. What I'm trying to do there is to shape the line beautifully, vocally, as if I was singing it. Uh, there are other types of runs that we find which are brilliant, that, that require strength, uh, such as from Beethoven's 109 Sonata. What I've decided to do is to take a tiny little snippet from the Dussek Sonatina that we have in issue 68 of the magazine, just for the purposes of demonstration, because I'm going to go through several stages with you this is the, the snippet. Now, when we're practicing or preparing any run, anything that moves fast, very, very important to start off really slowly. First thing I would suggest is to work out a fingering and stick with that. Now, the fingering doesn't have to be the same as the addition. It could be, or you might find that there's something that suits your hand better. But once you've worked out your fingering, write it in your score and stick with it. That's really important. The first thing I would suggest we do is to play with a very articulate, slightly raised finger. Let me show you that. Each finger is played with a separate articulation. Another very good thing to do for passages that will eventually be played fast is to practice them with a finger staccato. Again, each note very clearly articulated. Let me demonstrate that. Now, when you're doing that, it's important not to use extra movements of the arm that you're not going to use in the final product. So you wouldn't be gaining anything. In fact, you'd be impeding yourself if you would practice like that not with an arm staccato, just the tip of the finger. Those would be the first two stages, and I'd stick with a slow tempo for a little while until you're very comfortable with the notes and with the fingerings. A very traditional next stage is to practice with accents. Now, what I'm going to do is to accent every other note to start with. This helps us to group now in twos rather than in ones. Once I'm comfortable with that, I remove every other accent. So now I'm accenting 
every fourth note, which happens to be the main beats. Now, after I've done that, I'm going to practice in different rhythmical patterns. Now, the traditional ways of doing this are dotted rhythms. Let me demonstrate this. I'm going to add something to this equation which I think is very important, which is the release of effort on the long note. Let me demonstrate it first. Now that could be very tightening to my hand because there's quite an explosion of energy in the two quick notes. So what I need to make sure I've done before I move on is to, I don't like to use the word relax, it's not relaxed, it's release of any effort so that when I hold my long note, I'm completely free. And I free up again the instant I reach my next long note. So having done that type of dotted rhythm, I would then invert that and play this one. Again, paying attention that the arm preserves its looseness and its lightness. The next rhythm I would suggest is a grouping of three notes. Let me show you. And rather than think of it just as mechanical, what I'm aiming to do there is to connect the quick notes to the next long note. So I feel the move toward the next long note. Now I can make my groups even bigger. There are various other rhythmical patterns that you can use, but that's probably enough for now. One thing that's a very good thing for um, passage work like this, once you've done your rhythms, is to, is to practice stopping on notes of your choice. Now let's say, uh, for argument's sake, you always seem to fluff that C natural, that note. You can practice stopping, first of all, on the note just before it, and then finishing your group. After that, I would suggest going back and practicing stopping on the note that you had got wrong. Even though that's in the middle of a beat, that's the note that would trip you up or had tripped you up before. Another very use, let me change, let me change example now. And I'm thinking of the, the, the last run uh, from the Gershwin prelude, the first prelude. Now, I call this making a chain. What I do is I play with attention to ease and comfort in my arm, and I'm playing just a group of notes. I decided there to play the first beat. Now I add another beat, and I can go on till I get to the top. You can also do that backwards, starting with the last group and adding groups before that. Let me just, before I move on to talking about the role of the arm in runs, which is crucial, it's not just the fingers that play the piano, it's a coordinated activity, it's a blend of activity from my fingers and my whole arm. The danger with, with this sort of practicing is that we can end up sounding a little mechanical. So in order to remove the mechanicalness of this, or the danger of it sounding mechanical, I suggest going back to very slow practicing and exaggerating the musical shapes. Let me take that Mozart example that I showed you earlier, which is from the Rondo alla Turca. What I do there is I add hairpin crescendos, hairpin diminuendos to make it expressive and to make it vocal. Then when I play it fast, there should be a residue of that left. Now, let me finish this demonstration by discussing the role of the arm in passage work. Now, 
as I said before, we're not just using our fingers. Let me show you some movements that we use, starting off with a basic lateral wrist movement. And I'm going to take the example from the E minor Bach prelude. Do you see what I'm doing there? I'm as though I'm swinging from left to right with a very free wrist. Another crucial movement that we need in piano playing is rotation or forearm rotation. Let me take a tiny little snippet again from Mozart's Kirchel 280 Sonata. This is just the briefest little extract. Now if you notice what I do there, I don't play those notes actually with my fingers. Let me qualify that. This would be with the fingers. Now, of course, I'm perfectly capable of using just my fingers to play, but it's a much more natural movement to my body to use this movement. Do you see that? It's a rocking movement or a rotary movement that comes from my forearm. Now, another movement that we need to consider when we're playing runs is small circular movements of our arm. And I'm going to use this example from the Fantasy Impromptu of Chopin. Now again, let me show you with just my fingers. I find that quite effortful because I'm using my fingers as though they were little pistons, which is fine, but that's very easily tiring. And I think you'll agree it sounds rather clattery and not very musical, certainly not very delicate. So what I'm aiming to do now is to add small circular movements. Do you see how those work? Let me show you the choreography again. And then when I play that faster, what I'm aware of is fluttering movements of my fingertips combined with tiny little circular movements. I'm going to end this demonstration with an example from Beethoven's Für Elisa, which is the run passage. Um, let me just show it to you first. Now, the reason I've chosen this example is because it combines rotary movements with circular movements. And of course, all the time, our fingers are energized. We never want passive fingers. Do you see how that works? Let me show you that again. There's mobility of my arm in this direction and in this direction. I hope you'll find these ideas of practical value as you practice, and I hope that you will notice an improvement in your ability to play runs. Thank you for watching and I look forward to joining you again soon.